out here in the barnyard right now, it's lunchtime, so we are hand feeding some of our baby goats. My name is Jonna Davis. This is my husband, Trey. We own and run New Love Goat Milk Products. We are a working goat dairy in the Texas Hill Country. We are located in Center Point, Texas. It's about 30 miles southeast-ish of Kerrville. So what we do here on the ranch, we, uh, we're the largest goat dairy in Texas that operates without machines on their animals. So we're 100% hands-on. We actually started New Love for our own family's needs. Our oldest son, who was now 11 as an infant, had trouble digesting my milk. And we already lived out here on the ranch. Trey has raised goats most of his life. So he was the one who was like, we should get a dairy goat. You know, like he could drink goat milk. So for Valentine's Day, Trey brought home Dakota. And that was my Valentine's Day present. She was a two-year-old nanny that had doelings and I learned how to milk on her so that I could feed my son fresh raw goat's milk. And I just kind of fell in love with her. He kept joking around about how she was my new love. Um, we had to think of a, a registered her name. And that's when Trey came up with new love. Um, so I think something that's really unique for our situation and with New Love is we're taking Trey's background. You know, he grew up on one of the largest goat ranches in Texas. His family brought over the Angora goat. So he has raised goats his entire life. And from my point of view, I'd never done anything like that. But it was kind of New Love is kind of emerging of taking the knowledge and the skills he has as far as a rancher, but trying to put, find a market in today's industry. Well, Garner State Park way back in the day was actually family land before. I think it would be a great aunt that actually donated it to the state. And, but all around that area is where we did all our ranching. Uh, my grandfather, uh, Arthur Davis, at one time had 10,000 head of Angora goats and lots of goats, lots of goats. Well, goat milk is amazing for people that have sensitive skin. Um, I have really bad rosacea. We knew that we were gonna have issues with our kids' skins, and we did. Uh, the same one who couldn't drink the cow milk, he was allergic to zinc oxide, which is in every diaper rash cream out there. So I started researching, I actually talked to Trey's mom. You know, one of the best things for rashes was goat's milk. And I was like, well, I've got goat's milk. So I uh, went and got some fresh milk from the barn and put it in a little bowl. And I, I literally sat Kevin down in the bowl and just let him play like he was taking a little bath. And about 10 or 15 minutes later, I took him out and his rash had faded. And I was like, ding, 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 ding. When I called Trey, I was like, you're never gonna believe this. And he was like, you gotta figure out a way to market that, Jonna, the business person. We actually bought a Winnebago and strapped our kids' car seats into the, onto the little sofa in the back. And we went from, you know, central Texas all the way through. And we would just go to small towns and, talk to local shop owners and introduce ourselves and leave samples and we figured we had an old-fashioned product. It was made the old-fashioned way. We were going to do old-fashioned marketing and work face-to-face -face with local store owners. So this is our soap room up at New Love. This is where we make all of our soaps. Christina is one of our milkmaids who likes to craft soaps with love. Um, these are our drying racks. It's kind of a neat sight to see. All of our soap, because we do do old-fashioned, cold-processed soap making, um, all of our soaps cure for six weeks before they're handled. So that's kind of the mold line where we pour the soap and make it. Um, it sits in the molds for about 24 hours, and then it gets cut and placed on the drying shelves where it gets rotated. Now we're going to the kitchen. Janet is bottling lotion. So all of our lotions we make with fresh organic goat's milk from our own goats, and we blend it with raw, unrefined shea butter and organic sunflower oil. So it is all, again, focusing on good, clean, pure, high quality ingredients. Everything comes over here for labeling, and then after it's labeled, it goes into cabinets for storage. Cold process soap has to be able to breathe, so we use coffee filters. So this is my mom's working. My mom comes in two days a week and works with us, so she does soap packaging. Mm -hmm. So on the property that we have, the 537 acres that's diversified in different types of plants and trees, we can probably easily run 350 head of goats. The whole process in our case, doing the goat milk, is I don't want them all bred at the same time. Because then you get all your milk at once and you got none in December. So I have different separated pastures where I have my billies and put a certain amount of nannies there this month, a certain next month, so them always continuously having babies, which puts goats 
into a milk cycle. So I'm always continuously having milk for their product. This is our little baby pen. This is where, when our, when our mamas have babies, we uh, put them in here for, you know, just a little while until the babies get up and kind of can run, I guess, and avoid predators. Some of those little babies in there were just born last night. A couple of them are only, probably the oldest one, the one that's nursing now is about a week old. The, this one pasture here is about 312 acres and it's all pasture land. I got one of my billies in there with a handful of the milk nannies. So that's uh, in our stair stepping of a, our breeding cycle of always having mamas come in to milk. We separate, well, I guess I got 12 different little pastures. And so I rotate them accordingly until they eventually end up down at the house to have babies. So back in the day, I did all my ranch work off a of horseback, which I don't do that now. We use feed buckets. <laughs> make, okay. make them come to us. <laughs> There's not a pasture or probably an animal that I don't lay eyes on daily. And you just never know when one gets hit by a rattlesnake or, you know, and if, and if, if I can see the difference from day to day, I can react a lot quicker, a lot easier. So with all the work that we put into it, which we do, we start at 5.30 in the morning, quit at nine o'clock-ish at night, every day, irrelevant of weather. We do take time to uh, enjoy the ranch as well, which in my opinion is kind of like a new car. You don't buy it to sit in the garage. You gotta enjoy it sometimes. So this is a survey of the land that was done. This was the original Swayze Forest Ranch. It now is about half the size of property line is actually from here up. And uh, the Guadalupe River here is the border for the north side of the property. Um, there's our little house and our production studio and our barn. And uh, my favorite part of the property is right in here. It's just really some raw land um, that's got, it's kind of hard to get to the river there. We have a lot of cliffs, but it's just uh, big, beautiful cypress trees and, and raw land. Guadalupe River is pretty well spring fed from way up there above the uh, Ingram Hunt area. Comes down here, it goes all the way to the coast. Beautiful water, pretty well the only thing we do with it besides it helping with wildlife is the fishing and the swimming and just playing in the water. It's a, it's a great way to relax in the afternoons, no doubt. Well, we've been on the land for 12 years. We actually found it through a realtor and we started leasing the land. So we've been here for 12 years and we've got another eight years on our lease. So while we don't own it, it is our home. We actually named our child after the land here. I wouldn't say we were searching at all for the land. I think God kind of put us here. I just couldn't imagine myself not living in a city in a, a fancy house. We left here and went inside of the edge of the Guadalupe River, which is on the border of the property. And Trey was like, look around you. This." We would be moving here for this. We'd be moving here for the land. People don't move to the land to live in a big fancy house. People move to the land to be outside and in nature. And I was like, oh, okay, well, we'll give it a shot then. And now I love my house. I enjoy all the aspects of ranching, no doubt. And the family pulls together. You talked about a family business. We got the two boys that they understand ranch life what it's like to work as a family to get to a goal and it just keeps us together real strong. Absolutely. That's been one of the biggest blessings of living out here is the the opportunity to be so hands-on. You know, like Trey cooks the boys breakfast every morning. Like how many dads get to cook their kids breakfast before school every morning, you know, and I get to go pick them up from school or run up to the school if they need something. And just the ability to be together and we're enjoying the time we're spending together. And I think that's a lot more valuable in the long run, the relationships that we have with our family. And the friendships with our workers. I mean, mm -hmm. they work for us, but we're a tight-knit group. Mm -hmm. Why not goat yoga? What is there not to love about it? Like, you're getting, you're sitting on the floor playing with baby goats. There's nothing cuter than baby and goats. It's something you can do as a group with your girlfriends. Mm -hmm. We have families come. We I mean, have. we had lots of families come. 
we did it a little bit differently versus having people come out to the farm. We gear towards people with sensitive skin. Um, so we do it indoors and what we do is we have two teachers, they're both certified yoga instructors, um, and we just teach a beginner's class and basically we just put a bunch of baby goats in the classroom. I think probably the most strenuous muscle that works during a goat yoga class is going to be the smiling muscles because it's a lot of laughing and having fun. I think there's hurdles every day you're running a ranch. I mean, yeah. every day is a, yeah. new, a new challenge, whether it's a broken trough or, you know, a varmint or animals, you know, they're mammals, they get sick just like we do. So, you know, you're out there, a hot and cold affects them. Um, if it's 10 degrees outside, you're out there busting up, you know, water in the water troughs and stuff so that they can get something to drink. There's 19 miles of fencing on this ranch. And it was in terrible shape. It took me 10 years to finish the 19 miles of fencing. Had to build roads to get to certain areas. Gates, pins, chutes. The ranch hadn't been maintained in many, many years. So nothing was goat proof. One of the first things was having shelter for the livestock. So Trey did a lot of remodeling and just replacing structural elements of the barn. And then, you know, as we grew and production grew out of our house, we, you know, our dining room at one time was the soap room. And then we moved into the other house on the hill that became the soap house. Lots of change. The biggest hurdle I would think started with New Love is just getting your brand out there. I think anytime you're starting a, a locally owned company, um, you don't have the finances. We actually own New Love. That's another proud thing. In some ways, I think we were a slower company to grow because we didn't go take out a loan, a business loan. Um, but it also meant we were able to grow at a rate that we could handle. If you're gonna make any kind of living doing livestock, you've gotta respect the fact that you're making a living based off the animals. So you're, they're not just taking care of you, but you're taking care of them. And if you're not taking good care of your animals, they can't take good care of you. It's a lot better not to take some land and make it what you want. It might be better to look for the land that fits what you need. When you make mistakes, and you do, especially with a handmade product, take care of your customers. We have the opportunity to go out and like share with people what God's done for our family, what God, where God has placed us. And if we're not going out there being nice, then all of that's for nothing. There are larger goat dairies in Texas, but as far as we know, we're the largest goat dairy in Texas that operates without machines. And in doing that, you're committing to taking better care of your animals, I believe. I think if you're hands-on with each goat twice a day, you're not gonna miss when a goat's not feeling well. You're not gonna miss if you know a goat's getting mastitis. You're not gonna miss if a goat's getting you know a cold or something wrong with their eye. Like, we're physically out there living our life with the animals, and I think that really sets us apart from other goat dairies. So I love getting the emails from people saying that it's really um, changed their life, that they have skincare products now that they can use, that they can afford, and that they're comfortable using, and that they love. And cool. that's, that's why we're new love. I will say that land teaches you to stay humble. The land throws so many things at you that you probably have never even imagined before, at least in my situation. Um, I definitely think the land keeps you humble and keeps you dependent. I can't imagine not living on the land. God bade us to take care of the land. Like, the land provides everything we need for life. Landio. Land is opportunity.